Live from Philadelphia, America's birthplace of cream cheese, it's the 2016 Democratic National Convention. Let's not get crazy. Night three, Goldman Sachs presents the Hillary acceptance speech. to The Daily Show. I'm Trevor Noah, coming to you live from Philadelphia. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. Moments ago, Hillary Clinton officially accepted the Democratic nomination for President of the United States. So exciting. This is it. This is it. She made history as the first sane person to be nominated for President this year. Now, we'll get into the highlights of Hillary's speech in a moment, but one of the convention's most moving moments came earlier this evening from the immigrant parents of a Muslim American army captain who gave his life fighting in Iraq. Donald Trump consistently smears the character of Muslims. Donald Trump, you're asking Americans to trust you with their future. Let me ask you, have you even read the United States Constitution? I will, I will gladly lend you my copy. No, 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 what are you doing? That's the two things Donald Trump hates the most, Muslims and reading. No! <laughs> no. But after some more speeches and a beautiful Katy Perry show, it was time for Hillary to come out. Oh, but first, but first, as is customary in American politics, her daughter came out to introduce her. Our daughter Charlotte is nearly two years old. She loves Elmo. She loves blueberries. Uh, and above all, she loves FaceTiming with Grandma. My mom can be about to walk on stage for a debate or a speech, and it just doesn't matter. <laughs> She'll drop everything for a few minutes of blowing kisses and reading Chugga Chugga Choo Choo. Oh, that's right. <laughs> she will drop everything to be on FaceTime with her grandchild. Russia could be storming the coast. <laughs> Madam President, the Russians are advancing. It's getting dangerous. I'll tell you what's dangerous. This little face, <laughs> this little face. Someone needs to launch an attack of kisses on this little face, Chugga Chugga Chugga. Honestly, though, Chelsea gave a sweet speech. And uh, what, what was just as endearing was watching a video of Hillary's life, which was narrated by Morgan Freeman. Here is a woman. What does she dream of? When does she feel proud? How many times will she leave her mark? How many ways will she light up the world? Wow, Morgan Freeman, perfect choice. Perfect choice. No, because who, who better to humanize Hillary Clinton than the man who made us fall in love with penguins, people? <laughs> He's the right guy for the job. So after Katy Perry, Chelsea Clinton, Morgan, Hillary Clinton finally walked out onto the stage. And you know what? I'm just gonna put it out there. I don't know if I trust a presidential candidate who doesn't inappropriately touch their daughter. I... <laughs> I don't know, people. Where's the sexual tension? Something's missing. Now, Hillary's speech touched on a lot of themes, but first, she had to give a shout out to the man she beat along the way. I want to thank Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Bernie, your campaign inspired millions of Americans, particularly the young people who threw their hearts and souls into our primary. You put economic and social justice issues front and center where they belong. And to all of your supporters here and around the country, I want you to know, I've heard you. So now shut the hell up and let me do my speech. <laughs> and here's $27. Enjoy your bus ride back to Vermont. Go on, go on. 
No, that was sweet, though. It, it really was. You know, that's one of the first times I've heard Hillary and Bernie in the same sentence without people booing. My favorite, though, is watching Bernie, because he doesn't smile much, and then he looks up at the screens, and screens have that magic. Even Bernie is like, I'm on the screen. <laughs> I'm on the screen. And so Hillary moved on quickly to her new opponent, Donald Trump. He's betting that the perils of today's world will blind us to its unlimited promise. He's taken the Republican Party a long way from morning in America to midnight in America. Uh, wait, wait, isn't midnight the cool one? <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that's how you know Hillary's a hard worker. She's like, we need it to be morning again. And I'm like, <laughs> but it's midnight. I just got to the club. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, by the way, Donald Trump also hates midnight because that's when he turns back into a racist pumpkin. <laughs> so it's not the right analogy, but still. Uh, for real, though, for real, Hillary hit Trump hard all night because she knows that Trump can't take it. A man you can bait with a tweet is not a man we can trust with nuclear weapons. Yep, we can all agree. Someone who gets baited by a tweet should not have nuclear weapons. But someone who gets baited by a Facebook post, that's understandable. <laughs> because Facebook is for family. My grandmother's on Facebook. How are you gonna post that trash in front of Big Mama? <laughs> you blow up my newsfeed and I will blow up your country. <laughs> but this was huge for Hillary the whole night. After a lifetime of campaigning, a mountain of speeches, and a failed 90s sitcom, it all <laughs> led to this. And so, my friends, it is with humility, determination, and boundless confidence in America's promise that I accept your nomination for President of the United States. Well, that ends that mystery. You know, if ever there was a candidate who didn't need to say they accept the nomination, it's Hillary Clinton. <laughs> she's wanted this forever. Every question she's ever been asked in her life, she accepted the nomination. <laughs> Hillary, would you like to be president? Yes! <laughs> fries with that. With humility and determination, I accept your fries. <laughs> it was amazing. The whole speech, honestly, was phenomenal. Politics aside, I mean, this was... It was like watching a Rocky movie. We've seen her down, we've seen her up again. She was fighting through it. This was her triumph. And Hillary's speech tonight was the culmination of an entire convention based around unity. Politicians united in rhetoric. Activists united in purpose. Singers who came together to share one microphone among 50 of them. <laughs> and if tonight was the DNC World Series, well then yesterday was the All-Star Game because all the Democratic heavy hitters and Tim Kaine came together <laughs> in a mission, in a mission to defeat the racist forest fire that is Donald Trump. Think about everything you learned as a child, no matter where you were raised. How can there be pleasure in saying you're fired? He's trying to tell us he cares about the middle class, Give me a break. That's a bunch of malarkey. Wow. Wow. Joe Biden losing his cool and dropping the M-bomb? <laughs> yeah, and at the same time making all the C-SPAN viewers clutch their pearls. Ooh, Joe, you bad boy. <laughs> Actually, you know, for that joke, I wanted to say pearl necklace. But then my writers told me that in America, a pearl necklace means... <laughs> you people are disgusting. That's all I'm gonna say. You people are disgusting. But in all serious though, I've never seen Joe Biden this angry. It was like seeing your jokey grandpa get mad for the first time. I told you not to buy me a Japanese lawnmower! <laughs> Malarkey! <laughs> Joe Biden came out with fire. And then Tim Kaine came out. And he said some things. Can I be honest with you about something? Uh, I never expected to be here. I was born in Minnesota and grew up in Kansas City. My parents, Al and Kathy, here tonight and going strong. I spend a lot of time with Republican senators who will tell you how fantastic a senator that Hillary Clinton was. You know who I don't trust? 
Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> Donald Trump! Yo, 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 yo. Can I be real for a second? I heard that Hillary's VP pick was a white dude, <laughs> but that's a white dude. <laughs> that dude is white. Like, Tim Kaine, Tim Kaine is like a real life version of black people's impersonations of white people. <laughs> That guy is white. He makes, he makes Mike Pence look like DMX. That's how white he is. And he's cute as well. And even though, even though yesterday, Tim Kaine officially accepted the VP nomination, everyone, everyone in the arena was there for a different reason. Because it's the easiest place to buy weed in Philly. And also, <laughs> to see Barack Obama give what could be the last big speech of his presidency. And before he took to the stage, the DNC played a, a stirring video taking us on a journey through all the ups and downs of his time in office. And you know what? After watching that video, you realize how much, more than any other president this nation's ever had, Barack Obama has touched his face. This is someone who walked into office faced with multiple crises. Each one of them could sink the country. From his first days in office, the difficult choices he made as president would not only shape the country's future, but reveal the character of the man. His dermatologist hates him, I'll tell you that. Now, yesterday, uh, the president had a message for the American people about the man who, incredibly, has a real chance of replacing him. This is not your typical election. It's not just a choice between parties or policies. What we heard in Cleveland last week wasn't particularly Republican. And it sure wasn't conservative. America is already great. The choice isn't even close. You, you see that smile? That's not joy. That's the laugh of someone who's about to go insane. <laughs> That's the laugh. He's like, I had, to, I had to help bring the country back from a recession and, and out of two wars. And after all of that, you, you're gonna hand it over to Cinnamon Hitler? <laughs> oh, 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 hold me back. Oh, hold me back. Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna touch my face for a second. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'll tell you something, and this is not just an American thing. We are gonna miss Barack Obama. I'll tell you that now. And you know, as good as all these speeches were, it's all a waste. The truth is, none of this gets to Donald Trump. Because he always replies with the same thing. Who cares what you think? I'm a billionaire. Call me when you have a billion dollars. <laughs> well, last night, the Democrats did just that by bringing out former New York mayor Michael Bloomberg, which was genius. Because Bloomberg is everything Trump wishes he was. Trump has, what, maybe $4 billion? Well, Bloomberg has $40 billion. <laughs> Trump has a TV show. Michael Bloomberg has his own network. <laughs> Trump has small hands. Michael Bloomberg's whole body is tiny. <laughs> so, so who better to burn Trump than a fellow billionaire? I built a business, and I didn't start it with a million dollar check from my father. Trump says he wants to run the nation like he's running his business? God help us. <laughs> Truth be told, the richest thing about Donald Trump is his hypocrisy. Oh! God damn! This, this went from a convention speech into a billionaire roast battle. Hey, Trump, is that your plane, or did my jet take a dump? Oh! <laughs> your private island's so small, you didn't have, you didn't even have to relocate a native population. Oh! <laughs> knock, knock, who's there? Yeah, you would answer your own door, you broke-ass bitch! <laughs> Bloomberg crushed him so hard! How? At the end of his speech, he dropped so much fire, he, he just dropped a gold bar when he was done. He was like, I'm out! Billionaires around the world were losing their minds. <laughs> and of all the speeches we saw this week, this one, this one stood out the most. Because Michael Bloomberg is not a Democrat. He ran for mayor as a Republican and then as an independent. And yet, he came all the way to the DNC to warn everyone about Donald Trump. And my friends, 
If a man with $40 billion is worried about a Trump future, then maybe the rest of us should be running for the woods. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thanks for subscribing to our new YouTube channel. Uh, you're probably thinking, but I didn't. I know, which is fine, but now you're thinking about subscribing. You should really just subscribe. Just do it. Subscribe. Who said that? Subscribe. Who's saying these things? Subscribe now. What?